In this video, I will talk about how to create matrices in MATLAB for absolute beginners. I will start talking about what are matrices, how to create matrices, followed by indexing elements in matrices. You can find the timestamps next to each topic, and please feel free to skip around to find what you need. A matrix is a two-dimensional set of elements organized into rows and columns with square brackets. If you have n by m matrix, it means you have n numbers of row and m numbers of columns. Mathematically, the matrix can be written using the square brackets with a two-dimensional set of elements having space between elements, both horizontally and vertically. To refer to each element in matrix, typically you use two different subscripts. The first subscript i represents the row number, and the second subscript j represents the column number. A12 means the element in the first row and the second column. Let's talk about how to create matrix. A simple approach is to use a square bracket. Since the matrix is 2D element arrangement, we need to use empty space as a column separator and then semicolon as a row separator. To create a matrix A, type A equals sign square brackets with element for the first row followed by second row semicolon, third row. To access the elements in the matrix, you can use parentheses with the row and column numbers with the comma as a separator. The first argument should be row index number and the second should be the column index number. To access the element in the second row and third column, you can type A parentheses 2, 3. You can see 5. You can also use square brackets or a column operator for multiple indices. For example, you can use square bracket 1 and 3 to access the first and third row, comma 3 for the third column to see minus 1 and 2. You can also use 1, colon 2 for the first two row, comma 3 for the third column. You can also use colon only, and it means it will select the entire row. You can also use this approach for the column indices. There are a few useful built-in functions to create common matrices. First of all, the identity matrix is a matrix having elements of 1 in the diagonal position and 0 elements in the remaining. For the n by n identity matrix, you can use i function. For 3 by 3 identity matrix i, you can type i equals sign followed by i3. If you want to create n by n matrix with all elements of 1s, you can use 1s followed by n. If you have non-square matrix, you can use 1s n, m. For example, b equals 1s 3 to create 3 by 3 matrix b with 1s and b equals 1s 3, 5 build 3 by 5 matrix b with 1s. Similarly, you can create matrix C with all elements of zeros using zeros n or zeros n, m. For example, C equals zeros 3, create 3 by 3 matrix C with zeros, and C equals zeros 3, 5, create 3 by 5 matrix C with zeros. If you have random numbers between 0 and 1 in your matrix as shown in the slide, you can create such a matrices using rand n or rand n, m for a square or a non square matrix. For example, d equals rand 3, create 3 by 3 matrix d with random numbers between 0 and 1, and d equals random 3, 5, create 3 by 5 matrix d with random numbers between 0 and 1. If you want to rearrange the elements of existing matrix or vector, the reshape function can be used. The reshape function requires a matrix row and column size that you want to reshape. For example, you can create given matrix F by creating a row vector X from 1 to 12 as a dummy vector and then rearrange it into 3 by 4 matrix by using reshape X, 3, 4. The total numbers of elements of the reshaped matrix should be the same as before. You can combine existing matrices into one, either column direction or row direction. To combine two existing matrices, the column or row size should be the same. I will show you how to combine matrices C and D in column or row directions. For matrix H, 
matrices C and D are combined in column direction with the bracket and space between C and D. For matrix J, matrix C, matrices C and D are combined in the row direction with brackets and semicolon between C and D. You can keep adding the matrices as long as they comply the size of matrices. You can check the size of matrix using size function. There are two outputs from the size function, one for row size and the other for column size. To save two outputs, I use row and column. Let's check the size of matrix H. Matrix H is a 3 by 10 matrix. You often need the larger dimension only between row and column, and you can use length function, which is 10. Thanks for watching this video until the end, and please subscribe my channel if you want to continue to watch tutorial videos in science, technology, engineering, and math. Please give thumbs up if you enjoyed. Please feel free to share your thoughts in comment section down below. See you next time.